So the first one that we just did, um, if you increase income, increase demand, decrease income, decrease demand. And let me make it clear here that when we talk about a decrease in demand, we're talking about shifting the whole curve. If we have an increase in quantity demanded, that's a movement along the curve between two different points. So if you see it expressed as quantity demanded, that's a movement. If you see it expressed as just demand, that's a shift. And those are two very different things, and you don't want to get them confused because, again, that will be on tests. We'll see that on the exam pretty much guaranteed because that's one of the most basic things that you have to get straight in order to do this. All right, so a change in income can shift demand. The next thing, and some books will split this into different categories, but I like to keep them together. Okay. The second factor is change in a price of a related good. So if you change the price of some other product, that can shift demand. Wait a minute. We said that a change in price doesn't shift the curve. That's true if you're talking about a change in price of this product. But if we're talking about a change in price of something else, then that can shift the curve. And you have two possibilities here in terms of related goods. You can have substitutes. And you have to consider complements. Now, a substitute has to be a product that is close enough in quality, close enough in perceived quality, that people would actually be willing to stop buying one and buy the other if it got cheaper. So let's say, for example, we're still in our market for paperback books, that hardback books increase in price 20%. 20% more expensive in an economy like the one we have today. Now, granted, some people want hardback books no matter what. But a lot of consumers would say a paperback is a substitute for a hardback book. And they would say, hmm, hardback books just got 20% more expensive. Paperbacks stay the same. It looks like a much better deal suddenly. So you would expect if the price of hardbacks went up, for example, that demand would increase for our market in question. So we're not talking about a change in this price. We're talking about a change in a good that you would be willing to buy instead or you would be willing to give up to get this. So if a substitute got more expensive, you would switch to the one that's now cheaper. If a substitute got cheaper, let's say, for example, that hardback books, the price is cut by 50%. Well, if you're like me and you're kind of a book junkie, then maybe you'll go out and replace a lot of your paperbacks with hardbacks. We've done that before. Um, or you might say, you know what, that's a much better deal overall. And suddenly, the paperback market doesn't look so attractive anymore. They go, wait. Now they look relatively more expensive, you know, relative to our substitute. And if the paperbacks are relatively more expensive now that the other price has dropped, people will buy less. Easy substitutes to consider. You've got two gas stations, one right across the street from the other. If the price of one goes down by 10 cents per gallon, people will go there. And the other gas station goes, wait a minute, what happened? Everybody's over there. I'll drop mine by 11 cents. Now it's relatively cheaper. If two goods are really considered to be equivalent, then people will go with the one that is cheaper. Now if they're not really equivalent, if, if for some reason people think that one is an inferior product, then they're not really substitutes. 
They have to be close enough that you would really be willing to give up one to get the other. So if the price of a substitute becomes more expensive, then you'll buy more of the good that's now relatively cheaper. Same in reverse. If the price of the substitute got cheaper, you'll go with that one instead. And the demand for the product in question will drop. So substitutes have to be interchangeable or the analysis just falls completely flat. Now, your other option in terms of related goods are two things being complements. And the easiest example for this, from my perspective, are electronic toys. What do you see on electronic toys? Batteries, not included. Oh no! If you have ever been the unlucky kid who got the batteries not included toy and the jerk who gave it to you didn't give you any batteries, then you can relate to this analysis. Because if you have to have the batteries to play with the toy, then the toy without the batteries is a paperweight. Thanks for the paperweight. Or a doorstop. Yeah, that's lovely. I'll play with it sometime in the future. At least your door stays open. Well, there you go. That's a positive spin. All right, complements are goods that you consume together. In the case of the batteries not included toy, you have to have the batteries to play with the toy. If the price of the toy got cheaper, and we'll probably see this as we get closer to the holiday season, for example, when they start putting everything on sale to try to make people think they have to buy it. Batteries not included. The toys get cheaper, People are buying more of them. What happens to the demand for batteries? It increases. Because if you're buying more of one, you're going to demand more of the other. And that's how the price of one complement can drive demand for the other product. Okay? So substitutes are interchangeable. Complements are goods that are consumed together. And the, the change in price of one of these will change demand or the level of demand, meaning shifting the whole curve for the other one. Now, are all goods either substitutes or complements? No. If two goods are not affecting each other in any way, they're just, they have nothing to do with each other whatsoever, then they're called unrelated goods. At which point, the change in price in one has absolutely no impact on the other whatsoever. Maybe we're talking about DVDs and shoelaces. Okay, we lower the price of shoelaces by 20%. Does that impact how many movies you want to buy when you go to the mall? No, unrelated goods. So don't think that you have to always put goods in one category or the other, because for a lot of things, they're just not going to have any impact whatsoever. All right, so those are two of the big things that can shift demand. Your income level and prices of related goods. 